Hey, what is up guys? So we are going to be doing a deck profile on a Trap Tricks artifact deck that got first place over in the OCG area. It's actually a pretty unique build and I think it has a lot of things that we can actually learn from. As far as the OCG goes guys, Bottomless is at 2 so that kind of makes a huge difference in this deck but I figured I would mention that, I mean you could play a regular Trap Hole but Bottomless Trap Hole is obviously much better. It may go to 2 in the future, we'll have to wait and see because there are more support coming out for the Trap Tricks and you know Trap Tricks basically they need traps. I mean, it's kind of in their name, but who knows bottomless it should be going to two I think it has a high chance going to on the next ban list for the TCG But anyways, let's go ahead and get started with the deck profile I'll explain some of the newer cards that uh, you guys might not be familiar with with but uh, I also have a deck profile and a build where if you're playing artifacts you can get rid of your opponent's entire hand uh, turn one which is actually insane but I'll put that down below in the description box if you want to check that out but let's go ahead and finally get started with that deck profile so first off we have two trap tricks uh, Deona, I think that's how you pronounce it but anyways it's unaffected by the effects of <laughs> Uh, whole normal trap cards, but when this card is normal summoned, you can target one trap trick monster in your graveyard and special summon that target in face of defense position. Notice that it doesn't say except for trap tricks Diona, so that means you can special summon another copy of itself, which actually makes it really good. So when this card is special summoned, you get to target one whole normal trap card in your graveyard and set that target. You get you have to banish it during the end phase of your next turn. So basically what that does is it makes it so you're, so let's say you're going to be going for bottomless. I mean, that, that's the go-to card that you want to go to. So you want to reset bottomless. So at that point, your partner has to think, do I actually even want to summon? Because if I don't summon anything and just kind of end the turn, uh, his bottomless trap will get banished, therefore he can't reuse it. But if I don't summon, then I'm leaving my board blank, which can potentially lead to OTKs and stuff like that. So I think that this card is pretty awesome in that aspect. There's another card. Uh, He's playing three Trap Tricks uh, Mermillo. I believe that's how it's pronounced. But uh, anyways, so when this card is normal summon, you get to add one whole normal trap card from your deck to your hand, which pretty much means add bottomless trap hole. Or if you're playing the TCG for now, I guess you'll have to be playing a regular trap hole. But you know, trap hole is still not a bad uh, card. Obviously, bottomless is much better. Don't get me wrong. But you know, I still think trap hole. You know, sometimes it could be just as good uh, as bottomless trap hole. But when this card is special summon, you get to target one spell trap card your opponent controls, and you get to destroy that target. So maybe, you know, you know your opponent's not going to summon next turn. You get to go ahead and just pop one card. Maybe they're playing a stall deck, and you're just going to be able to just pop a card when you go for Diona to bring back Bermillo. So that's a pretty good aspect of the, you know, just little advantages. Next up, he's playing three of, well... Because the artifact's names will probably be changed, I think they might be changed according to their color. So he's playing three of the artifact blue, which basically just pops the card. He's playing uh, two of the uh, artifact green, which basically resets some of the uh, artifacts. He's playing two of the yellow, or orange, and that allows him to get some draw power. And he's playing three red, which essentially let him pop his own cards to basically get effects during uh, his opponent's turn. Next up, two card card D, because you really don't summon in this deck. I was really surprised he didn't play three card card D, because, I mean, you have your whole trap tricks but this deck can be really slow to get started but i mean once you have you know you want to just i can just one other trap tricks and then from there you can kind of recycle your stuff and i think that that is really good in the deck next up he's playing a three maxi two effect veiler one instant fusion which i thought was kind of random because it kind of ruins some uh room in the extra deck because uh, he does have a lot of access to uh rank fours and fives in this deck and i think there's a lot of good ones in this deck but we'll get into what targets he's playing later because one of them is kind of funny uh next up he's playing dark hole uh interesting to see he's not even playing heavy storm because i think perhaps players are i don't really see too many starlight rollers but perhaps players are afraid of the mirror match perhaps in artifacts because if you have your storm an artifact player usually they can go off and they're like oh it's cool let me just special on everything and at that point you can just simply lose because you activated heavy storm but there's a lot of OCG players that just aren't playing Heavy Storm, which is, like I said, is interesting to me. But uh, next up, two pod duality, three artifact movements. I think this is probably one reason why he does not play Heavy Storm, because he feels like he doesn't need it. Because he's also playing triple double Cyclone, which allows him to uh, select one spell trap card he controls, and one spell trap card his opponent controls, and then he's able to destroy both of those targets. So, I think that's probably why he doesn't play Heavy, and this kind of has more utility for him anyways. So, as far as the traps go, playing one bottom, well, he's actually playing two bottomless, but like I said, OCG versus TCG, so if you want to play this deck, you're going to have to play one bottomless, one trap hole. Uh, then there's three, uh, 
Philosophy of the Artifacts, which just allows him to special summon an artifact monster. Usually you want to go for this card, because this card's amazing. Uh, and then two Call of the Haunted, just so he can make faster XYZs and stuff like that. And, you know, obviously it works for the Trap Tricks, because when they're special summon, you still get to get something out of it. So, even as a chainable, you know, that's not bad at all. As far as Ancient Fusion targets, he's playing Panzer Dragon, which is probably one of the best fusion, instant fusion targets ever. We don't actually have it in the TCG. But, you know, its effect is when this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can target one card in the field to destroy that target. So, if you go for Instant Fusion, I know the, uh, the monster is uh, you pay a thousand, and uh, the monster uh, cannot attack and is destroyed during the end phase. So, that's pretty good. I mean, if you think about it, if you really, really need to uh, pop a card, hey, I think that that would work for that. Um, the other card he's playing, I think, is just for a joke. It's Marvelous over here. <laughs> it almost reminds me of that Crimson Sunbird artwork. But uh, next up, he's also playing Dark Line Warrior. I'm just gonna, I'm not even going to bother trying to pronounce that name. But during either player turn, when a card or effect that targets exactly one card on the field and no other card is activated, you can detach one material from this card. The effect now targets another appropriate uh, target on the field. So that way, if they're like MST or you're like, oh no, you MST me? No, I'm MST you. <laughs> I think that that is hilarious. Um, he's also playing number 103, Ragna Zero. So. Once per turn during either player's turn, you can detach one material from this card, then target one face-up attack position monster your opponent controls, whose current attack is different from the original attack. Just for the target, and if you do, draw one card. So that's not only good just to get rid of, you know, a monster, but it allows you to draw. I would say the most relevant deck that has the ability to change its attack is probably going to be Fire Fist. And the OCG Fire Fists are still, you know, they're still a thing. They're much more popular, I would say, in the TCG than they are in the OCG. So, um, you know, this card is just basically use it against Fire Fist is what it comes down to. Other than that, there's not really anything that is like tuning all mouse over them, so you can like check the name out if you are unfamiliar with some of them. But, um, well, there's also this card, number 106, but if you're playing this in real life, uh, this, this I believe is the YCS prize card. I don't really don't think it's the most amazing. I think number 101 is just, this card is the most amazing thing. And then he's also playing the Extinction Knight. But really what it comes down to is uh, it likes to play a lot of cards. It just gets him a little bit of advantage, and this, this deck will have a really good matchup against Fire Fist, I would say, because... Fire Fist, I would say, is a deck that usually doesn't OTK, unless they're like playing Rekindling, which is kind of rare, I would say, because everyone's resorted to the card cardies and the upstarts just to make the deck really consistent and being able to, you know, sustain itself in the grind game, meaning a longer uh, game. But I think this is definitely a very awesome deck, and, you know, I love these decks to try to mix in two archetypes together and they have some synergy, because in the Artifact deck, you really don't need your normal summon, and I think it definitely does work pretty well with the Trap Tricks. Perhaps Trap Tricks might be a new, like, tech set of uh, the eight cards right here, because I think that Diona and Marmilla uh, are, have a lot of great utility. I mean, adding a Bottomless Trap Hole is really good, and obviously you're unaffected by, basically, Bottomless Trap Hole. <laughs> or regular Trap Hole, if anyone is, you know, playing Beer Match, I guess, in this. But this is a pretty awesome deck from the OCG. I love these, uh, you know, unique decks. But like I said, guys, if you guys want to check out a really dumb way to play Artifacts, which is, it's a really sacky, really trollsy way to play, and your opponents will be very angry, go ahead and check the uh, description box below, and you guys can also download this deck, and then uh, check out the Artifact deck, where you get rid of all your opponent's cards, uh, you know, turn one. And I think that it might be something that might end up getting, uh, you know, uh, Permabanned. <laughs> it kind of happened with Mass Driver. That was one thing. Like, no one likes getting like, basically FTK'd, but, you know, it happens or looped or something like that. But it happens in Yu-Gi-Oh! And that's why I think that we need to expose these cards and then, therefore, uh, they can get hit as soon as possible so they don't get abused too hard. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Asian Eyes, signing out.